Hey friend, how are you? How are you feeling today? Today's story time is a personal one about how to take depression by the balls and beat its tail. So let's get into it. Hey, it's your friend Adam Lee. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where we share weekly vlogs about life and story times that will make you go, hmm. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Depression, much like stress, can be considered a silent killer. And depression for me has developed over the years throughout the many experiences that I faced and choose not to properly deal with. I've realized that fighting depression takes plenty of courage faith in something, and the determination to win. I like to call it a silent killer because most individuals don't desire to or are extremely afraid of talking about the idea that they are mentally not okay. All depression is not the same. There are sometimes you may feel sad, lonely, or hopeless for a period of time. And in my case, I had waves of emotion that bombarded my existence quite often. One morning I woke up feeling so sad and no matter what I did, I was unable to shake the feeling of sadness. I can recall another experience when I felt so alone. I felt isolated and it strongly defeated the reality that I'm not alone. Lastly, but certainly not the least of things, depression had me feeling hopeless many times that I would not be able to overcome. Hopeless that I would never win and hopeless that I would never be okay. I had quickly established a practice to fight both mentally and spiritually because I was physically harming myself by staying quiet. As I'm extremely afraid to admit this, I was using sex and adultery as my choice of drug to cope with depression. I was also addicted to the idea of dying and could fantasize different scenarios in doing just that. I felt a glimpse of release by the thought of ending my life just to stop the pain. I was feeling so broken and secretly wanted others to feel my pain because I felt that everything I touched turned to coal instead of gold. The battle of my mind was clearly in a revolutionary war and I needed help. That is when I embraced and began to practice the art of fighting. I began to change my activity to ensure that I can win. As a believer in Christ, I had to first open my mouth and speak out. I decided that I would not allow depression to have victory over my life and it be my ending destination. So how did I fight? I do this in just five committed steps. Number one, I look within myself and I realized that everything I needed was already inside of me. The one thing I needed was strength. We don't have to find it, it's already in us from birth. When we are pushed with a difficult task, strength is revealed. We often don't realize that we have the ability to conquer something until it's already done. That strength comes from God. We are made strong in Him and we are made to win. He continues to guide us in maximizing those tools that are placed within us when we are designed. So I meditate on His words daily so I can be reminded of how great He thinks I am. He looks at us with such love and anticipation of an expected end. He knows that we can overcome and he rejoices when we do. So keep talking to your God, keep listening, and he has the answers to your deepest concerns. Before anything else, it's imperative to understand that you possess everything you need to fight. Number two, I created a vlog weeks ago and it began with a small portion of my many affirmations that I recite daily. Affirmations are not just a projection of the future, but it gives you power to manifest the now. Basically, affirmations are statements that affirm truth. What you say will change your thinking and you will start believing it about yourself. There are many ways to use affirmations, such as reciting them in front of a mirror. My grandmother taught me years ago to command my day, command my morning, and to command my life, to work in alignment with what is real. What I want is to be healthy, wealthy, and most importantly, happy. So I recite daily, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm happy, among many other things. Number three, exercise your mind and body. 
read, write, stay active. It's my goal to walk two miles a day, and I also participate in so many other exercises. Exercises can be very effective to treat depression. I have learned that in clinical studies, regular exercise is as effective as an antidepressant. It also can get you out into the world. It help reduce the feelings of loneliness, of isolation, and it puts you in touch with other people. So stay active in your life. Also, active in your mind. As we have been told many times, knowledge is power. Reading is fundamental. It's a fundamental gift that does more than we think. So let's challenge ourselves to read a chapter a day of whatever book is sitting on your shelf that you have been wanting to read. Remember, if you can't find the time, make the time, whenever that will be, but do it. Don't start tomorrow. Let's start today. Are you getting any value from this video? Hit that like button if you don't mind. Number four, removing the distractions. One thing that bothered me was social media. I looked at many posts on Instagram and Facebook with severe jealousy and sometimes agony. I wondered why I wasn't in the same place as many of my peers. People seem to only post their victories and frown when others post their transparency. And it was causing me to own sadness when I didn't seem to achieve as much as everyone else. Multiple studies have found a strong link between heavy social media and an increased risk for depression, anxiety, loneliness, self-harm, and even suicidal thoughts. Social media may promote negative experiences such as the inadequacy about your life or appearance. As a result, to fight this personally, I've decided that I'm going to fast from social media on certain days for a period of time because I need to regain a new perspective for my own life, not through the lens of comparing myself to others. When confidence was established and maintained, that was my personal indication that I was ready to resume on social media. Number five, seek help and share. It is important for me to have a mentor in my life. So I established two very significant brothers in my supportive circle that will hold me accountable as a man, as a husband, as a minister, but most importantly, as a child of God. My mentor is someone I can talk to and be very transparent with. I've also participated in mental counseling to properly and adequately deal with my thoughts and past experiences that shape me for who I am today. I am no longer in bondage to my thoughts because I sought refuge in professionals that would guide me to the process of complete healing with God. Depression is a silent killer, but I am loudly declaring that it won't kill me. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share some feedback by answering this question. Have you ever gone through depression? What practices do you have in place that will help you overcome? Consider hitting that subscribe button for future vlogs and story times. As always, I love y'all for watching. Surprise someone deserving. Give them a call. Tell someone you love them and show them that you care. Remember, love is an action word. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.